Oh, hi, Goran. I'm Sarah from the upcoming. Such a pleasure to speak to you. How are you today? Hi, Sarah. Good, good. How are you going? I'm very well. I guess it's evening there. No, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Dinner time. <laughs> opposite so, end of the yeah. <laughs> um, so maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to this incredible film of an age. And um, what can people expect when they watch it? Um, well, it's about a boy living in Melbourne in 1999. Um, it's the peak of summer. Uh, it's, uh, the school year has just finished and he only has one more thing to look forward to as a year 12 student. And that's his dance finals, dance championships, uh, in his suburb, uh, which, you know, he's kind of built his, uh, life on, uh, cause you know, the dance is his passion and he wakes up ready to go and gets a phone call from his dance partner. She's working up, uh, hungover, uh, doesn't know where she is, but gradually figure out she's on the other side of the city, uh, the other side of Melbourne, which is hours away. So they have to quickly figure out a way how to get um, uh, someone who can drive to go uh, go with uh, Nicola, the main character, uh, so that he can pick up Ebony, his dance partner, and then so they can make it in time. Uh, the only person who can uh, help is her older brother, uh, Adam. And they venture, venture off to try and uh, make it to the dance finals. They don't really make it to the dance finals, but the two guys along the way develop a really um, intense connection, which goes for many years. Mm. And I remember seeing You Won't Be Alone. I think we spoke about um, that film in mm. London Film Festival, which is obviously a completely different genre, um, kind mm. of folk horror. And th this obviously feels like maybe you've kind of returned to your roots, you know, in a much more kind of um, realistic realm. Um, so I don't know, what was the inspiration behind the story? How much were you drawing um, from some of your own experiences? And why did you kind of want, want to make that that genre switch for, for your follow-up film? Well, to be honest, it's not a strategic thing in terms of which genre or like it wasn't, um, like uh, Of An Age was the 13th feature script I'd written um, and I hadn't yet made You Won't Be Alone at the time. I was preparing to shortly after. Um, and You Won't Be Alone was never going to be my first feature as far as I knew. I just, I didn't know what that was going to be. I sort of had been kind of languishing languishing as a failed uh, filmmaker at the drugs of the industry for so many years that I was stunned uh, when I finally met my now producer, Christina Season. Uh, that she wanted to work with me in general. And then she kind of picked You Won't Be Alone from the set of scripts uh, we had, I had at the time. Um, and then by the time we filmed it, I had just written Of An Age. Um, so that was kind of the most recent one afterwards. And we definitely wanted to keep working. Um, and it wasn't like a matter of strategy or in terms of like trying to do something opposite to the previous film. Um, a lot of the films I've written are very different <laughs> from each other, actually. Um, something I'm trying to finance now is the political satire. So, like, again, very different to anything I've done. But it's sort of, I try to, it kind of always comes from a particular energy um, that I associate. Um, like, the first inspiration is always a particular energy that becomes kind of like the main character. And then the setting builds around them. And, and, and the genre, I suppose, builds around them from there as well but i sort of am always trying to honor like the reality of their feelings whether you know they're a political operative in eastern europe or like a confused boy in melbourne or like you know a lonely witch in the Macedonian mountains in the 19th century so yeah um i sort of i'm always stunned whenever they let me make a movie and very grateful for it and it can always it's always about to be the last one you know it might be the last one ever so um I'm just happy I get to make any. <laughs> so, yeah. And I was watching it and I felt like it kind of um, had touch points or um, it was sort of reminiscent of other things I've seen before, you know, people sort of making comparisons between of the, you know, before sunrise, before sunset films, you know, almost like combined in one. Um, this kind of the, the coming of age and the coming out kind of genres sort of mixed in there. But at the same time, it does feel you know, very fresh and different and sort of the the dynamic between these two characters, you know, it's not one that sort of stays static, this kind of a push and pull right from the beginning and then and, and then through the film. Um, so I wonder, did you, do you take influences from other films? Did you have any others um, when you were writing this one? Um, and, and what might be some of the touch points for you? Um, no, when I'm writing, I usually try not to think about other films, or it's not even that I need to try. You're kind of, again, you're operating based off of a feeling. Um, 
And I sort of, it's more that I picture situations that they would take place in real life, you know, not in a movie. And then how it's shaped uh, in the movie is sort of informed by the, how, how the character feels in a particular situation, you know, whether the camera is going to be close, whether they're going to speak or not speak, whether, whether I'm going to hear them, you know, speak or not be able to hear them, that kind of thing. That's kind of what's driving it. I was aware, like, you know, a couple of days into writing um, of an age that, uh, like, the, what would be the obvious reference uh i thought would be before sunrise um and you know there's like a queer film called week i assumed like i would only be compared to other homosexuals it's what happens you're always reduced to your demographics so i was like it's gonna be you know weekend call me by your name moonlight and if any other gay film comes out in between because you can only be the gay thing at a time um and you know i love all those films as well but um th i wouldn't I, I say I was thinking of them because I was really just thinking of what life felt like for me in a place and a time I've never seen depicted in a natural way, like which is suburban Melbourne, 1999. Um, and, you know, like my migrant household on the, you know, dregs of the suburbs. So um, and whether there was a way to make this, you know, least cinematic time and place in the world actually somehow feel cinematic. Um, and that's what it came down to. The only uh, other at least movie influence that I, I would say actually was conscious was actually the before uh trilogy only in the sense that um when i finished writing what i thought of an age would be uh it was just the 1999 section um and i realized it's only 75 pages which means it's only gonna be 75 minutes <laughs> which means no one's gonna finance that film unless i come up with 25 minutes really quickly <laughs> um and then in the context of before sunrise i had already kind of been thinking not just that film but also the antoine Juan elf series uh you know i've always been drawn to these stories that re revisit characters every you know 10 years or boyhood uh, obviously every couple of years and i thought uh what would these guys be like if they met again 10 years later um and so i wrote 2010 uh from that perspective or thinking back to you know richard linklater's and for his films um but yeah that's kind of it and tell us about you know how you chose your cast and you work with them because you know it, it does sort of feel like it's playing out in real time and just the subtlety of um you know each glance and and each moment that passes you know those that that, that feeling of first love kind of happening before your eyes you know not all actors can maybe pull that off so and, and also you know finding the sort of contrasts and connections uh, between the two characters so, so how do you decide on them and how did you work with them um they stood up very quickly i mean with tom green i stumbled across uh, some clips of his acting just when I was doing my own research into, you know, what Australian actors in that age range <laughs> exist in Australia, uh, you know, uh, and are still around. So I kind of came across some of his, uh, like, there was a clip from a film he made called Down River, where it's not even like particularly showy acting on paper. He's this boy, he's riding a bike, he gets off the bike, walks into a bar and smiles at the bartender. And it's just like, a very ordinary mundane moment but like this guy like is so it just looks like you're witnessing someone going about their day like there's no self-consciousness there's no selfie face coming on like if he's looking at a bike or if he's looking at another person they just become alive because it looks like he's genuinely engaging with his environment rather than just sort of wondering what it looks like in camera which is the problem i find with most young actors um so he was like you know as soon as i saw that i was like he's gonna be somewhere in this film no matter what and then alias uh who plays uh, nicola the younger character came through i i had been uh, aware of his work but i didn't think he would uh fit the role physically uh but then his audition came through and I, there was just this quality of like um rawness and like a sense of a life that's been lived again and again there's no selfie face that comes on he just kind of goes into this mindset and it doesn't feel like he's mimicking or acting out feelings. He's really experiencing them, you know? Um, and when we were shooting, like a lot of the time um, with the most emotionally intense scenes, like I, I would only do one or two takes. Um, and I felt like, and the crew was prepared that, you know, nothing can go wrong. We're shooting, we didn't even rehearse. We just go straight into it because like, when when these guys go into that space, that mindset, um, especially Elias being uh, even younger than Tom, it, they're going they're kind of reliving trauma in, in some way and it's a very you know 
like it's a gift to you as an artist but it's also like grueling to be there because we're very close friends now i mean we, even we were during the the film shoot um and it comes from and i think that sense of like real like uh moment to moment um sense of like you, you're watching someone feel, fall in love in real time i think it comes from that that we kind of go we, we go into this space where it's not just acting out feelings you kind of wait for the feelings to come to you a lot of time i'd say action and action didn't mean we had to start straight away it meant everyone was rolling and would be staying out of our way and you know the camera the car was driving but they could start speaking or stop speaking or reset at any point um and takes would go for like 30 or 40 minutes um and I think that sense of like you you forget there's a camera rolling um you forget it's a fictional world you're you're living in these feelings and in these relationships um and and it was a really special experience you know like even on set we all felt like what we've had was beautiful and you know we're hoping the film would be good too but like it was already worth it for you know how, how it was um uh, on set actually and, and coming to the sort of look and feel of the film, I know you're working with the same cinematographer you had with um, on, on You Won't Be Alone. And and there's such a great quality because it's probably much harder than people think to create something that looks very real and looks, you know, um, very natural um, and just kind of, you know, the yeah. way the camera moves. Um, and, and then, of course, we're taking, you know, taking us back to 1999. And there's so many subtle things that, you know, probably if you're a certain age, you realize, you know, we're just back in that different era, just like getting out the map or, or things like that, which also felt very crucial to, to the dial up internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. Like it was M M Maddie C. So M Matthew Chuang is the cinematographer. And then also Bethany Ryan was the production designer on both of the films as well. And we, we all the three of us worked very closely. Like, um, and it is extremely like the challenge is also that sometimes you, you can only ever really control so much because for it to feel natural, you can't really stage it and it, for it to feel found, you know, it can't also feel staged. Um, and then, um, like you end up having to operate with natural light and kind of all these other things that you can't control. Um, never mind like weather and even like filming in real locations and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah i think um we're now very used to that uh, especially after you won't be alone uh which was even more challenging obviously so we're very used to it and it's sort of um like i think because we have such a close rapport that um it it's sort of we finished shooting this film two days early <laughs> like you know like we finished under we shot it in 16 days the whole film uh, 16 shooting days there were a couple of days off in between so the boys could grow facial hair so they were 10 years older <laughs> and that was it um but yeah i think it comes from that sense of um we worked with the same principles um and i i we're all kind of going with like trying to organize like a 360 degree space on on set and even the, the crew knows how to move around actors so like the actors can move in all directions and then like uh maddie knows what compositions are like I'm, I'm often talking to him during the camera takes because i'm very picky about my framing um but less and less as the shoot progresses because we're kind of like you know so it becomes very symbiotic very quickly and then he knows how to position himself so that uh you know in relation to the light source which usually is a natural one so that you're not sacrificing you know visual quality and cinematic quality but still the actors kind of don't feel uh, impeded in any way um and then you know very careful judicious editing <laughs> goes into the process as well uh again looking to not sacrifice either performance or you know visual quality um and yeah what do you hope people take away? Because for me, um, it's one of those films that sort of stays with you. It gets under your skin, which I think is sort of, you know, really capturing, obviously, the feeling that these two people, the connection they had really stays with them. Um, and, and do you feel that we have moved a little bit beyond what you said that back in the day, you know, you always put in a box, oh, this is LGBTQ plus film. But actually, you know, are we getting a bit away from that now? And it can just be seen as a universal love story as well. Well, to be honest, I've been a little bit um, surprised. I, I thought we had moved on further. Um, and, you know, not that I uh, mind the film being, you know, like it is a queer film. It's very unapologetically, <laughs> undilutedly queer. Um, but, you yeah, know, there were some comments and things that I would see that, like, like literally just sort of is reduced to, uh, you know, or it gets compared to, like, gay films that have nothing to do with it story-wise or, uh, you know, in terms of, 
visual style, but it's just like, oh, of course, it's just about gay people. Therefore, it's the same thing. <laughs> you know, like it's being really care. Like this, it's not so much something you can control much. But I had thought that we'd moved on to uh, past that a bit, a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I, I didn't have to like. I didn't feel like I still have to explain how gay sex works. But w especially with some of the older critics, it definitely does feel like that <laughs> that was necessary. Well. Um, well, actually, the flip side of that experience was, uh, you know, going to festivals and like the amount of women age 20 or 50 or literally 70 who would come up to me and say, how did you know my story? And like, you know, a lot of them straight, um, but like that, that's when I tear up or like, you know, there was a woman who came to like the last time I did a QA and a was a couple months ago. And there was a woman who uh, just came up to me and like literally just touched she was in her 70s i think she just touched my face was in tears couldn't speak and just walked away and like is why why you make the film and that is the feeling you hope that they uh go, go away with because to me it's like it's to capture what it felt like uh, to be you know under my skin in 99 as a teenage boy and then again the context of the hope you had at the time and what life does to that hope and um if people can come away feeling like that same thing because it, it's a lot of it is universal when you feel like teenage and powerless but still hopeful that the future will get you out of the rut that you might be in um and then the future comes later on and it's a surprise in a different way and i think that's what i hope people come away with that that feeling Mm, absolutely um well i'm out of time but thank you so much for sharing all that with me and i can't wait for everyone's chance to see this amazing film thanks so much